Can you all see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So remember the topic. Well, the topic we are talking about um on Tuesday. We are talking about technology. I remember I said that before you begin that you need to understand the question that was given to you, analyze the question, underline keywords, and make a plan before you start writing your essay. Now your plan is basically rewriting the statement that was given to you and then giving brief answers to the to the questions that was given to you. So so what you realize is that your plan would help you to write a good introduction. And then a good introduction will help you to write good, a good, a good paragraphs. So now, modern technology. Can you all hear me? Someone is telling me. Can you see my screen? Can you hear me? You can is see my we voice can hear is stable. It does, okay. Yeah. It's, okay. it's going up a little bit, but it's, it's okay. Okay. Uh, because they were laughing me that my internet is unstable. Okay, now they, okay, modern technology is now very common in most workplaces. How do you think this has changed the way we work? Do you think there are disadvantages to relying too much on technology? Then we went on to give an introduction. Nowadays, the latest forms of technology in is now prominent in various workplaces, and this has certainly improved the method of working by making processes faster and easier. In my opinion, I think there are no particular downsides to relying a lot on tech, aside from the fact that physical human interactions may diminish as a result. So now we move on to writing a good paragraph. Remember, I gave two answers. There are two, there are two questions. There are two questions in this essay. There are two questions. And I decided to split my body paragraphs in two. In that the first one, the first one answers the first um, question, and the second body paragraph answers the second question. Now, writing a good body paragraph, can you see this this part of the slide, the right hand side, where it says writing a good body paragraph? That the way I gave a, you know, the way I gave you a formula to writing a good introduction. There's also a formula to writing a good body paragraph. First of all, you need to use your linking words. You know, at the beginning, before the class, I said, at the beginning of the class, I said there are some things you need to consider when you want to write your essay. I talked about linking words. I talked about paraphrasing. I talked about how to structure your essay in paragraphs, that there are three major paragraphs that every single essay should have. That's introduction, body paragraphs, and then conclusion. I've said all those things. So now I mentioned some linking words. Hi. As it said, he's in the waiting room. Can you let him in? Sorry. Oh, he came. Okay. Yeah. I'm not looking at my chat. So okay, thank you. Okay. I was not looking at this. So are you here now, Naziz? What did you miss? Where were you when? Hello, Aziz. Where were you? Like, where, where was I when? Sorry, where was I when you when you left? I didn't notice. Yeah, my my phone went off abruptly. Okay. So. so what was I saying when you when you left off? Yeah, you're not saying anything. You're rounding up in the assignment. Ah, so you left off since. Okay. I so now we are talking about writing a good, how to write a good body paragraph. So I was saying that the same way I gave a formula for introduction, that's the same way a body paragraph also has like a formula. And that's what we are talking about now. Okay, before we go into that, I was also saying that there are some things I talked about that some important things you need to consider while writing your essay. I talked about, um, you know, I, I mentioned using linking words, how you need to, you need to now to structure your essay in paragraphs and how to do that. And then going into the formula for the body paragraph. Seeing that we have two questions, they gave, they asked us two questions in the question. It now led us to giving um, two answers when we are writing our introduction, 
You understand? So it's also going to influence the way we are going to structure our essay. That is the number of body paragraphs. So I decided to use two body paragraphs. Why? Because two questions were asked. The first body paragraph will answer, would um, expand shit on the first question that was asked. And then the second body paragraph would expand on the second question that was given. So now you notice that I use the linking word firstly here, because these are the things that you need to use when you are writing your essay. It helps with your cohesion and your cohesion, like how your ideas, how you start fleshing out your ideas. So see the formula to writing a good body paragraph. First of all, the first formula, there are three. There are three steps to writing a good body paragraph. The first one is write a topic sentence or more like your main idea. This is, it's very easy. If you, if you had a plan, your plan would have helped you to write your introduction. Then from that, your introduction, you can now flesh out what you just briefly mentioned in your introduction. You can now flesh it out to a proper sentence. So that's like your topic sentence. So that's the first thing you should be doing to begin your body paragraph. See, I know that you have the, the question is already like giving you ideas or many things to talk about, but just calm down calm down, just give us a major, a topic sentence, which you derive from your introduction, write it out. Then after writing that topic sentence, then explain that topic sentence, explain it further, like additional, give an additional explanation. Just imagine that you have somebody sitting in front of you and you're trying to break down, you're trying to break down a particular topic, you're trying to break it down to that person. So that's how it is here in this essay. You write the major sentence the main idea, then further explain it. After explaining it, then you can now go on to give an example. So what does it do for someone? An examiner or someone reading your essay, would, even though the person is a dummy, the person will be like, it will make so much sense because you just broke down the idea from a major sentence, you explained it, and then you gave an example. So see the sentence, see the what paragraph I did, I said, firstly, the use of technology in various sectors of both national and international economies. All these things just, uh, just to make it gain gain. That's just what a topic sentence is. That your idea just to make it finer, to make it fine, uh -huh, make it fine. Just, but we've already said what we wanted to say in our introduction. Remember the introduction. Let me show you that introduction again. Introduction, see what I said though for the first question. You know the first body paragraph is dealing with this first answer to the first question. I said, and this has certainly improved the method of working by making processes faster and easier. That's just the answer. They said, how did you make, how did you change the way we work? You understand? Man, I said, okay, the way it changed the way we work is that it improved the method of working by making it faster and easier. That was my answer. But now to make it the main idea or a topic sentence, I now added all these extra things just to make it a, a touch sentence. You understand? Just to expand it. See, this is my main idea. I said, firstly, the use of technology in various sectors of both national and international economies has sped up the process. See, I underlined that sped up, sped up the process of delivering work results. I'm underlining it to show you that I paraphrased. Instead of repeating the same thing, saying that it makes work easier and faster, I now use the paraphrase. I said the same thing with another set of words. I said, sped up the process of delivering work results. Then I now went on. The next sentence is now my further explanation. Whether it's a product or a service, this has definitely upgraded the way work is done in that more commodities can be delivered to end users in a short space of time. I'm still paraphrasing here. Instead of repeating faster and easier, whatever I said in a short space of time, this is paraphrase. Now, our example. For instance, now linking words that you can use for, please, I hope you have a notebook nearby. I want to mention some linking words that you can use for giving, introducing your example. You can say, for instance, you can say, for example, you can say, to illustrate, you can say a typical example is, so these are linking words you can use to begin your 
your your example sentence. Don't just go on to say to start talking about the example. No, you need to let us know that you want to give us an example. So linking words like this would help. Once the examiner is reading, they know that okay, this person is giving us examples. So her main idea or his main idea. Say so for instance, for example, to illustrate a typical example. So these are ways you can introduce your examples. And then for your, your explanation sentence, the sentence that further explains, you can, it depends on what you want to say that sometimes when you can use words like, this means that, these are good linking words for your explanation sentence. This means that, in other words, and then I'll give, an, I'll give you um, an assignment to go and search for more linking words. Please note it down. The, the assignment will favor you, you understand. You are the one that wants to write more essay, that wants to practice, you, you get. So your assignment is to look up, just, you can just Google linking words for out essays and you see many articles that come up. So select the good ones. Don't just pack any junk, anything you see online. You can show them to me to also check. Are we following? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. Well, um, Aziz told me his internet has gone off, so he won't be able to join. It will catch up with recordings. So he said I should tell you. Okay, okay. Okay. So any questions for now? Do you have any questions? No, nah, not really. Okay, so we understand, we understand what I'm saying, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just Google search for linking words for your IELTS essay. Then from what I've explained, you can easily tell the linking words that you can use for to begin your main, your main idea, your explanation sentence, and then to give examples. So these linking words are very fantastic. Like they will help, they will give um, an arranged a logical pattern to your body paragraphs. So I went to say, for instance, before now, it took up to several months for business transactions between foreigners to be finalized. But with the introduction of digital communications platforms, deals are now finalized easily and without delay. See? So even though someone that read the first main idea still didn't get what I was saying, my second sentence will break it down. And then the person still don't understand completely. I'll now give the person an example and then the person, oh, okay, this is what you're saying. So that is what the body paragraph ought to do. Just to break down your idea to the, to the simplest form for anybody to understand. And then the second body paragraph, because I've used the linking word here firstly, is now logical for me to use secondly here because it clearly shows I'm giving two ideas here to support my stand to support my answers rather. Secondly, technology has influenced the way people commute to their workstations or offices. Let's look at that, my introduction again. Process is faster and easier. Okay, my, my main ideas are just faster and easier. So it's fair for me to still talk about um, getting to means of transportation, or whatever, faster you get. So, I went on to say, secondly, technology has influenced the way people commute to workstations or offices, people who have access to faster means of transportation. See, my first, my, my, my first, my topic sentence or main idea is now being explained further by this second sentence here. People who have access to faster means of transportation. See, I use commute to work at the beginning, at the main idea. The topic sentence, and I'm saying faster means of transportation, such as bullet train, can now decide to live and walk several kilometers apart without spending long hours on the road. See the way I now introduced <laughs> my examples. In fact, people can even walk on the go on their internet enabled smartphones, tablets, and laptops due to the ease and speed that technology has brought these days. You get so now you just see that I broke down my topic sentence to the simplest way possible. So, do you understand? Do you understand this? I hope we do because I'm now yeah, going we... to give you your the assignments. Okay, okay, I heard you. The assignments that I'm going to give you this time at the end of today's class. In fact, if we still have time, enough time. No, 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 okay. We won't write it. We won't write it in class. To be assignment, to be an assignment. The assignments I'm going to give will show 
if you really understood what I explained. So even though you can't remember everything I said, just know that there are three formulas, there are three steps in writing a body paragraph. There are three things your body paragraph should have, a topic sentence or main idea, then an explanation sentence followed by your example. Those are the three things your body paragraph should have. So as much as your introduction has a formula, your body paragraph also has a formula. You know, the second question that was given, do you think there are disadvantages to relying too much on technology? And I answered it briefly here in my introduction. In my opinion, I think there are no particular downsides to relying a lot on tech, aside from the fact that physical human interactions may diminish as a result. So now, seeing that I used two body paragraphs to answer this first question, I now dedicated a third body paragraph to this second question. And I think a reason why I did this was because I wanted to meet up with the minimum of 250 words. Remember, 250 words. Things like this can happen when you're writing your essay and you now notice that uh, if you write it this way, you will meet up with your minimum number of words. So you now go and add extra, an extra body paragraph to meet up. I think that's what I did here. So I've used, firstly, secondly, then the linking word I'm using here is finally, because I'm now like trying to deal with the second question that was asked. But looking at it now, I can even do away with this. I can do away with this finally. I can do away with this finally. Why am I doing away with it? Because it doesn't follow with the ideas, like the two body paragraphs, the first two body paragraphs. The first two body paragraphs are like giving further explanations on uh, the, how work processes are now faster and easier, you understand? But this one is now talking about something else. So finally is not, using a linking word like finally is not that perfect. You can just go on as in straight to the point. You can just say, in my opinion, you can say, in my opinion, in my own view, I think they both mean the same thing, but I decided to use in my own view because I've used in my opinion in my introduction. You can also say from my own perspective, please take note of this things from my own perspective, you can say from my own point of view, these are other ways you can say the same thing. I think there are no significant demerits. Here, in the introduction, I used particular downsides. So if you look throughout the essay, you see them Try my best to paraphrase, to use different words to say the same thing. I use downsides here, but in the body paragraphs, I used what paragraph I used no significant demerits attached to too much reliance on technology, apart from the fact that it could negatively affect the level of face-to-face -face communication. So I didn't use physical interactions. I now use face-to-face -face communication. This is because many people now prefer to do business online rather than meeting physically. So this question, because of the way the question was asked, I just went straight ahead to give my opinion. You understand? So that formula, it's not in every case that in my work, especially when you are asked, when you are asked to give your opinion, you understand? So it depends on the topic or it depends on your idea. So if you look at this one, you just see that I gave my opinion and I gave the reason and I ended it there. This is, a, this is because is a straightforward um, question and answer. And then writing, trying to give example and everything will make me overwrite. 
So this is a skill that by the time you've practiced many questions, you now know how to minimize some paragraph. And this thing happens mostly when you are using three body paragraphs. Please take note of this. When you realize that your essay would have three body paragraphs, then you have to make sure that those three body paragraphs are not too long. Even though maybe the first one is a bit long, then the other two should be kind of brief, straight to the point, because you don't want to overwrite. But when you have two body paragraphs, then you can decide to make them just a normal size. Yeah, you might not get really understand what I'm saying or relate to it. So when you start writing and practicing, you understand what I'm trying to yeah, say. That's what I wanted to ask that um, this formula, can I use it to follow, like, can I use it for all the essays? You know, give the topic sentence and the explanation and the example. Can it be applied to all the essay questions that you may get will be agree, disagree, opinion, explanation, and all of that. It can, it can be applied. It can be applied. It's just that with time, as you practice, you now know how to adjust, make some adjustments, you understand, accordingly. Basically, is a is a basic template that you should follow because it gives a logical way to flesh out your idea, the idea that you mentioned briefly in your introduction, you understand? So yes, it applies, it applies to it, but you know, it's just the way an expert at a particular skill, maybe an artist that is an expert at drawing paintings, making paintings, you know, with so many years and exposure to their work and everything, they can now, they can easily um, do a little compromise on what their formula to producing a certain result, and it is to come out good, to come out well, you understand? So that's how it is here. The formula is your basic template but you can still do a little bit of tweak here and there and adjust it and your essay will still come out fine. So it doesn't mean that you have to be rigid. You, you do not have to be rigid while using it. Just as I did in this third body paragraph. What it does for you is that it gives you like a guide, like a sense of direction, you understand? Because some essays, when you just see them, Many ideas will just start coming to your head and everything. But if you actually have a template that you're working with, it will help you to curb some unnecessary or extra things. Just help you to um, make everything comprehensive. So that's what I'll say. You can apply. I'll show you. I'm going to do a run through. I'm, I'm still going to show you other essay types. So you have an idea on how you can adjust all these things I've said um, in relation to other essay types. So we'll visit them and we'll see some other essays now. Let's just um, finish up with how to write a conclusion, a good conclusion. So now, conclusion is basically a summary of the essay that you've written. Take note of these things. It should tally with what you wrote in your introduction, but this time in a closing manner. A good conclusion doesn't include any new ideas. See, no matter how a topic, a question is very interesting to you, and you have many things to write, and maybe you're writing your introduction and you just remember something. Ah, I say, ah, let me write it, let me write it again. Mm -mm. If it was not in your introduction or body paragraph, please do not write it in your conclusion because as it's, the name indicates, it's a conclusion, it's a summary of what you have already written. So do not include any new idea here. Yes, the introduction or the conclusion, they might look boring to you, but please, it's logical to follow the, the 
the pattern or the formula, you understand? It's just a summary of all you've written. So what it actually means is that it, it looks a little like your introduction, but this time you are just concluding what you said. It's just like giving a speech. You began your speech with an opening remark, giving your listeners an idea of what you want to talk about, you understand? And then the body of your speech, you expanded on what you wanted to say. And after all your talk, you now want to give a closing remark. You will now summarize all you said in brief sentence, you understand? In some words, you won't start talking of, maybe you spoke about, we are talking about um, children, the life of children in boarding schools. That's what you are talking about in your speech. Then you now want to summarize. You summarize with what you started with. You are now gonna start talking about dogs, the many dogs that children in bodies. I don't know. I don't have to explain this to. But you now you shouldn't start talking about another topic altogether in your conclusion. You need to remain, just repeat what you said in your introduction, the body of the um, essay in a closing manner, and that's all. So if you read what I wrote in my conclusion, you see that it follows what I've just said. The developments in technology, this is just paraphrase to new, what does the question even say? Modern technology, you understand? Modern technology, that's what the, how it was stated in the question. In my introduction, I said latest forms of technology. Now, my conclusion, I said the development in technology has particularly made our work process faster and easier. See, I still, I think I was stuck with, I didn't know the words to use again. <laughs> I then repeated these words. So that's how it is. Sometimes if you've used paraphrase here and there, synonyms here and there, and you run out of words, it doesn't, you can still use a particular word you use earlier on. Instead of writing something else that doesn't explain what you want to say, or, uh, or that doesn't relate, or something that confuses your reader, you understand? And I am of the opinion that there are no major demerits derived from high dependence on technological advancements. So if you look at this conclusion, I didn't add any new thing here. I only paraphrased what I have said earlier on. So if you look at it, it follows, it tallies with what I wrote in my introduction. It tallies with what I wrote in my three body paragraphs. It is brief and straight to the point. So it looks like, it just looks like what I wrote in my introduction, but in a closing manner this time. And then look at the linking word I used for my conclusion. These linking words are very important. It clearly tells the examiner that, okay, this is his or her conclusion. So for your conclusion, please stick with these words. You can say in conclusion, please write it down somewhere. In conclusion, you can say to conclude. You can say in summary, you can say, you can write rather, you can write to summarize. So these are the four linking words for conclusion that I think are okay. In conclusion, to conclude, to summarize, in summary. So these are linking words you can use for your conclusion. Please do you have any questions before we move on to Another type of essay. No, I understand. Mm -hmm. So now, you know this type of essay that we used to explain how to write our essay is the direct question type of essay. They'll give you a statement and then they'll just give you two questions, ask you two questions. So. I call this direct question type of essay. 
But there are other types that I'll want to run through briefly to give you an idea of how to apply this formula to those types of essays. So, but before we do that, let's look at the total number of words. So this is the essay that we have written. This is it. This is it. You see that it has five body, sorry, five total of five paragraphs. We have our introduction. We have the first body paragraph, second body paragraph, third body paragraph, and then our conclusion. And this is the total number of words, see? 293. 293. So these are the things, that formula that I was talking about, because I knew I already had three body paragraphs, and I knew that if I Start applying it here. I'll be writing um, over 300 words, and that will be unnecessary because it, it, will eat, it, will, it will eat into my time, so affect my time. So these are the things, adjustments you can make to your essay. Remember at the beginning, I said that if you follow the formula I'm going to give, it will always give you an average of 270 to 280. Um, average number of words. So this is it. This is how you write your IELTS essay. Is this the right? <laughs> yes, ma. Yeah, this way you I put it. It's looking easy, but <laughs> it's easy. You have right. a formula. Yeah. What? Why you have to wrap your brain for the Oibo? That's the main part. It doesn't make sense. It does. So you say it doesn't make sense. It doesn't. It doesn't. Um, you shouldn't look at it that way. Let me let me give you a hint on what to do on what to start doing now. Do you enjoy reading yes, books? Me yes, but the yeah. novel kind of books. Novel. Do you have time to read them? Please start reading them. Start reading them again. Please, it should be standard English novels. Or I don't know the type of hope is not this um <laughs> Nollywood. <laughs> That's not the novels I'm talking of. I'm talking of books like. I don't have to mention books, but do you understand? Established writers, yes, English, we understand. Yes, American English or British English, you understand him. Please start reading them. With whatever form, let me tell you, whatever form you enjoy reading in, please start reading again. What it will do for you is that it will help your vocabulary, it will help your grammar, it will help your punctuation, it will help your spelling. Okay. So start because you want to write this test. Do you understand? If yes, it's yeah. articles, news articles that you enjoy reading, start consciously start reading them on a daily basis. So it will help you. So forget, no, you don't have any problem. We'll see you. Seriously. When you start reading, you see that whenever I want to practice your essay, words will just start coming to you. You start paraphrasing becomes easy and all that. So no. There's no problem, or seriously, to expand the ideas. And then I'll still give you links on websites you can go to read, check out model essays, and all that. So it's not a problem. No, you can do this. So it's not about ILCS. Just know the strategies to work with, and then practice, practice, practice. I am good to go. Have a goal in mind and work towards it. So let's move on. See this essay, this is a discussion type of essay. We have we have like an hour to go or so. So let's hurry up and see and touch on all these types of essay. So this is an example of discussion type of essay. See the question. Some people say history is one of the most important school subjects. Other people think that in today's world, subjects like science and technology are more important than history. Discuss both views and give your opinion. 
See, a secret to how to answer this question is in the way they put, they ask you the question. See, this is the way I LTS, this is the way they give you your question. They'll write the question and then they'll now say, give reasons for your answer and include any relevant example from your own experience or knowledge. So see that formula I gave us, that formula is in these statements here. See what they said, give reasons for your answer. That is more like explanation for your answer. And then they now say, write relevant example. That's just that formula I gave. You give your answer, that's your main idea. Then your reasons is now like further explanation. Then relevant example is now those examples I said. So that's, if we, if we can understand the sentence, you already know how to write it. So that's what I did. That formula I gave for your body paragraph is just, an explanation for these statements they gave here. So that's 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 right. Way. So see what see discussion essay. They will talk about one view. They will say some people said this. They saw another people said this. Do not say discuss both views and give your opinion. So let's make a plan now. Let's make a plan for this essay. Now, when you look at this discussion essay, you know they've already given you the opinions of the two people. The only thing you should be doing in your plan now is what? Can someone tell me quickly? What should your plan be? You should paraphrase them. Plan, plan, plan. What should your plan be before okay. you begin your introduction? For you to have the, in today's world, your this thing. Don't your point. Like yeah, your opinion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's what I've been waiting. That's what I've been waiting for. Yes, it's just your opinion. Your plan should just be your opinion. Okay. So make that plan now. Just briefly write your opinion. You know, plan now. It doesn't take time. Let's give us five minutes here. Five minutes is too much, but just let me give you five minutes. Okay, someone has sent me something. Hmm. In my opinion, we can't deny. Mm -hmm. One of the things I mentioned, I said your, your writing should be formal. And when we say formal, it means that you shouldn't use contractions when you're writing in your essay. The only place where you can use contractions in the whole of your writing in um, that's in the whole of your writing in IELTS test is only when you're giving an informal letter. You have to write an informal letter. Informal letter, meaning a letter to a friend or maybe your family member, something like that. That's so where I have to write cannot in full. Yes, you need to write it in full. Okay. No contractions here, please. Okay. In my opinion, we cannot deny the the need for students to know their history. But I believe in today's ever new world, science subjects will be serving a better purpose. In my opinion, of course. Okay, you can put it this way. In my opinion, we can't deny the fact that students need to know their history, or deny the fact that the knowledge of history is necessary. But I believe that in today's ever-changing world, science subjects will be serving a greater, a greater purpose. Or serving a greater good, a greater purpose. Okay. And it's just your grammar. Yeah, but I got your, I, I understand your opinion. But just your grammar can be better. Okay. Then... Have you but have you sent yours? I'm not seeing because I'm finding that too. <laughs> what? Okay, what? Coming. What did you say? I'm finding it hard to bring it together. Okay, what is your opinion? Yeah, my opinion is that the world is evolving and we need science and technology to be taught more in class because we are yeah, the world is evolving to the greater 
Oh, technology. Idea has influenced um, your choice of words and yeah, in fact, that has rubbed off my idea. Okay, mm. I get. But I like the fact that you used um, the word evolving. So yeah. that's a word you can interchange okay. in the body of your essay. That's the word you can use to interchange with that ever changing. You can say the, you can also say it's evolving. Mm. That's just the choice of word I like. But your opinion, whatever it is, you need to be concise. Okay, so let's move on. You have an idea. So we have an idea of how your plan should be in your discussion essay. It's just your opinion, just because they've already given you the ideas of both parts. So the, the standpoint, like your posture here should now be that in your first body paragraph, you should be talking about the first opinion, which is some people say history is one of the most important school subjects. What does it mean? It means that you are going to be discussing like, you are going to be discussing the ideas of those people. So you won't put your opinion in your body paragraph one and your body paragraph two. This is your opinion that you mentioned in your plan won't be in any of those first two body paragraphs. Why? Because you are discussing the viewpoints of the two, the two, the, the two views that I was given to you. You are discussing, you are, you are now discussing it objectively. In body paragraph one, we are going to discuss that uh, history is the most important his, is the most important school subject. That's what we are going to discuss in body paragraph one. We are going to discuss like those people. They get. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Second body paragraph. We are going to discuss like the other people that think that science and technology is more important. It's now in our third body paragraph that we will now give our own opinion. So make sure that what paragraph A and B, that is one and two, is devoid of your opinion. That is the unique thing about this essay. And then you can still apply the formula I gave, the formula I gave for both paragraph here. The formula for your introduction still applies here. You paraphrase what they gave you, what they said. And then you give a brief answer to the question that was asked, which is your opinion. You just paraphrase the two viewpoints. And then I've given us linking words. We already know, of course, linking words to how to um, give your opinion. You can say in my, in my own view, in my opinion, I think something like that. Mm -hmm. So that's all. That's how your introduction will be here. So let's see what's an idea of how this essay can turn out to be. So see, this is an example of what I just explained now for introduction. You just say, see what I said? There is a popular opinion by some that the most relevant school subject is history. See, if you look at it, I still say, wait, can you see, can you see this um, font? I hope it's not too tiny. No, no, no we can't. Okay. There's a popular opinion by some that the most relevant school subject is history. See, I paraphrase what they said here. Mm -hmm. While others consider science and technology to be more important. See, very straight to the point. Yes. I repeated the same thing they said. All I did was just to change the arrangement of the sentence, but it's still the same thing. Then see my brief, the brief answer to the question of that. I said, in my opinion, I think both school subjects play significant roles in the necessary knowledge, knowledge set for students. This is my own opinion, I understand. Mm -hmm. Then let's see what, what I was explaining at first. Let's now see how you can use, you see that linking word. I don't know if it was Abiba or Idaya that used it. I don't know which one of you used it in one of 
when we are talking about introduction, one of us used that, um, um, what does it say? On one hand, someone used it in an introduction. That on one hand, yeah. on the other hand, it is in this type yeah. of essay. <laughs> it is in this type of essay that you ought to use it boldly. You balance with it. And I'll show you how you use it. You can now begin your the first word paragraph with it. Let me see. I hope I use it here. <laughs> so see, on one hand, history seeks to take into account events from the past that have formed the foundation of civilization. That on one okay. hand, history seeks to take into account events from the past that have formed the foundation of civilization. I went on to explain the knowledge transferred to school children about their background, therefore gives them an understanding of their origins, culture, and I say origin, I say origin, origin, culture, economical progress, and so on. For example, the history of a city can inform its leader on what works and what does not in their decision making. I basically said that history takes into account past, more like the foundation, the information about the way a civilization started. And then the knowledge can then be transferred to school children about their background, give them an understanding of their culture, their progress and so on. Then I now to further buttress on how important it is to a society, I now said, the history of a city can inform its leader on what works and what does not in their decision making. But if I want to make this example perfect, I should make the example in relation to school children. You can say, for example, a student who has an understanding of the history of a city can have a better understanding of a, the career choice or a, a better career path that will benefit his, his society, his or her society, something like that. I'm just, it's just something I'm just um, um, thinking of now. <laughs> but do you understand what I, do you understand what I said here? Do you understand what I mean? Hello, I'm following. Please come again. Yeah, you're following me. I was saying that to make this example even better, yes, I can make the example in relation to a student because okay. students or school children are the subjects here. They are the, as in, what we are talking about what? is in relation to, to them, to, to the children. Uh, yes. So it's just now, as I, as I was reading it, that it occurred to me that hmm, leaders, doesn't quite relate. So I'm saying the perfect example should be about um, a school, a student, or school children, something like that. So you can say, for, for example, the knowledge of the knowledge of a city can help a particular student to make a better career choice or career path in that the person chooses a profession that will benefit his city based on the history of that city, something like that. He gets, I'm just buttressing on the fact that, oh, children knowing the history of their city or their country or whatever, is that's very important. Now, there's something else though, you see. Remember that this is, an English test, an English proficiency, proficiency test. They're testing your task achievements. The four criteria that they will judge your essay on is task achievements, coherence and cohesion, your vocabulary range, and then your grammatical range. So you'll see that they didn't mention about, they didn't talk about your ideas, like 
how grand or how perfect or how advanced your idea is. So don't be scared about, oh, you don't know so much about a particular topic. Don't be scared. No matter how basic your idea is, the thing is that can you write it in a logical manner? Can you break it down? That when somebody's reading it, they'll understand what you wrote, that your grammar is correct, spelling's good, punctuation's good, um, and you're paraphrasing what well, you're using a wealth of um, vocabulary, you're like interchanging your words. That's what they're looking at. So do not be scared about your how simple your idea is. And see, do not be sentimental. Do not be attached to a particular topic. If you know, or an idea rather, if you ask a question, even though you disagree, in reality, you actually disagree with an opinion, but when you are planning, you realize that you don't have ideas to back, you don't have ideas to back your opinion. You don't have examples to back your opinion. Better do away with that thing. Just go with a stand or an opinion that will give you more ideas, things to write about. Do you understand? Yeah. Yes, sir. Hmm. So they're not, they not judging your idea or whatever. Just go with something that will give you ideas to write about. So let's move on. See, I use the linking word on one hand. So it's clearly um, appropriate to use the other one on the other hand. When I'm beginning the other opinion, you understand, in the next paragraph. So I want to say on the other hand, science and technology represents represents the body of knowledge on breakthroughs in research, which has resulted in many transformational solutions. Mm, all these ones is just talk on, just writing, stretching, talking as if I'm, I'm one of the people, I'm, I'm speaking like the people that are of this opinion, that's just what I'm doing here which has resulted in many transformational solutions in our modern world. See, when I now use T, I used one of those linking words I suggested in your explanation sentence. I said, this means that science and technology plays a major role. Please, you have to be continuous tense. This means that science and technology plays a major role in our present in our present and future. Thus, it is a subject that children ought to be taught. For instance, students can create apps, programs, and robots that are used to solve everyday life problems. So you see that I use the linking word to begin my main idea or my topic sentence. Then I further explain that topic sentence. And then I went on to give examples. And you notice that I didn't repeat the same linking word. The first body paragraph I used for example, the second body paragraph, the linking word I used for my example was for instance. Mm -hmm. So take note of these things. Mm -hmm. Try as much as possible not to repeat a word, but there's some words that you can't, um paraphrase of course like science and technology like mm -hmm. as almost that you just have to leave that way and it doesn't matter so these i'm just giving you an idea of how your discussion is the higher to arrange it and the stance the poster you have to take away right in it so in my in my view my own view I can say in my own opinion, from my own perspective, in my own, in my own view, I think both subjects should be given priority. You know, in my, I just mentioned it briefly in my introduction. I just said, I think both subjects plays significant rules in decision knowledge sets for children. But here, I now expanded on it. 
I said in my own view, I think both subjects should be given priority in any school's curriculum as they represent our past and future respectively. A student who is taught both will have a balanced education because he or she knows where he or she is coming from, I wrote in brackets history, and is capable of creating groundbreaking tools for the present day and decades to come. So you notice that most times when you're giving your opinion, you don't necessarily follow that formula per se, but yeah, giving your opinion. And the same thing I said there, we are working with three body paragraphs. So we are making our body paragraphs concise. So are we are we following? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. Um, so but our, something like this, our opinion has to be contradictory, like um give a different or maybe choose one one side. I don't know, is it better to choose one side and say, okay, I think history is better, or we can choose both sides. Any any of them, you can choose both, you can choose one, you can go for a particular opinion, you understand? You can choose. Mm -hmm one opinion that is already given you can support one you can say okay my opinion i think you you know when you were discussing about the opinion at first you are just being objective straight to the point you understand but now when i want to give your opinion you can now further expand on it as okay you support this particular view because this is so, yes yeah, so yes you can you can, it can be both. You can go for either of the two opinions or you can come with another, come from another angle altogether. You understand? Because they asked you, what is your opinion? So you are free to bring in whatever you think in relation to the statement that was made. So now, the same explanation goes to what I explained about our conclusion. It applies here too. See, I decided to use to conclude here. The linking word I decided to use to conclude. So to conclude, why history is thought by some to be better, see, I'm paraphrasing what I wrote in my introduction. Nothing new. To conclude, why history is taught by some to be better than science and technology and vice versa. So instead of repeating, I just said vice versa. So that is, vice versa means that some people think history is better than science and technology. Why do other people think science and technology is better than history? That's what it means. Comma, students must benefit from the two subjects in order is in order, it's not order. In order to be adequately skilled for the present day. So I did not add any new idea to my conclusion. My conclusion is basically um, similar to what I wrote throughout this essay and in what I wrote in my introduction. So that is how your essay should be. Your introduction, that's why you need to plan. That's why you need to plan, because your plan will give you direction. And every other thing should flow from your plan. And total number of words, remember I said my formula should give you an average of 270 to 280 words. I'll see what you give me, 274 words. And all these things, you master it when you start practicing. So that is how your discussion essay should be. Let's move on. Any questions? All good. Well, we have 20 minutes. I'll just have to run quickly. At least we have an understanding of how this essay is, how the essay works. So advantage and disadvantage, this one is very easy. Your plan, you've already done an assignment. Um, I've given you an assignment to do an introduction. 
the advantage has been disadvantage essay. So see this one. In some countries, the government promotes public transport as the primary means of transportation and discourages private vehicle ownership. Discuss the advantages and the advantage of this situation. Mm, all you need to do is to make your plan. Your plan is basically you, you can just pick two advantages. What are the advantages of this policy that people should be using public transport? We should not be buying cars. We just okay. These are two advantages I have. Two disadvantages. You just write it. That's your plan. Yes, yes, I'm listening. For the this kind of example now, mm -hmm. the body paragraph one will be will contain the two examples of the advantages. I mean, not the two advantage. examples. The two advantages. Yes. Two advantages. Yeah, the two advantages. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then the second one to contain of the two disadvantages. Yes, yes. Okay, then the you. other third one will now be your own opinion of this. No, oh, it okay. didn't ask us for opinion here. See the oh, question. This one. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. okay. I now. See. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Thank you for asking the question. Yes, so now, you. now you are getting the point. First body paragraph advantages, second body paragraph disadvantages, disadvantages. and your conclusion you straight. For this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let me point out something in the body paragraphs here. Okay, le okay, let me begin from the introduction. See, I just paraphrased the statement that was given. I said the promotion of the use of public means of transportation by some countries governments over individual vehicle ownership could aid in the reduction. See, I just used that statement. I just used it to introduce my my advantages immediately. I said could aid in the reduction of traffic congestion and air pollution in cities. So I've gone ahead to mention my two, the two benefits. Then see how I introduced my the disadvantage. I said, advantage. however, yeah, however, policy. So there are different ways, you understand. But okay. you are basically paraphrasing the statement and briefly mentioning your the answers yeah, to the questions. So, however, policies like this can disrupt car dealership businesses and interfere with personal preferences. So, see, I did not explain Google to go start talking story, story. I just mentioned, see my, do I mention this? Reduction of traffic congestion, air pollution, and then disrupts car, Dealership businesses and then interfere with personal preferences. So I didn't start explaining my, I just mentioned them. So now, see, you know, since I'm going to be talking about two advantages in the first body paragraph, see where I used firstly. I used firstly to expand on the first advantages. Firstly, encouraging citizens to commit primarily via public transportation can serve as a method to curb traffic problems in major cities of these countries. Then, see, this is because, see, this is a linking word for your explanation sentence. This is because the number of private vehicles on roads will definitely fall, thereby giving way to only vehicles such as buses, taxis. Taxis, okay, I was supposed to say public transport public transport and train. Then see the I now use this linking word secondly. Secondly, so to so now, no, not introduced to so now, it's my shit on my second advantage. Secondly, socioeconomic drive, socioeconomic drives such as these, that as I'm referring to the policy now, to the promotion by the governments, such as this, we eventually enhance the air policy in general. This is as a result, COC linking word. I use this is because in the first one, then see here I'm using this is as a result of the reduction in the volume of carbon emissions in the atmosphere. See, I now used example 
you notice, see the way I adjusted that template here, that formula. Yes, ma'am. I just use like topic sentence, explanation, topic sentence, explanation. Then I now use one example for the whole, um, for, the whole for this body paragraph. Yes. So these yeah. are ways you can adjust it, but <laughs> just with time. Especially when you notice that you are, ah, you overwrite, so if I start talking longer, so you just adjust accordingly. For instance, some European nations enjoy better air policy due to the prior, prior, prioritization, ah, my tongue is rolling, <laughs> of mass mm -hmm. transport systems use. So I just gave a brief example. Because I know that if I start explaining, I'll overwrite. Then, you know, we've talked about the advantages here. Then, seeing that I want to now bring in disadvantages, you can use words like, however, nevertheless. But I think we've used, however, I've used, however, in my introduction. So I decided to use, nevertheless, that I now stay mentioning the disadvantages. These sensitization projects would hamper the revenue of car or private vehicle mission. See, I'm using paraphrase here. I didn't repeat car dealers or car dealership or something. Here. I said car or private vehicle merchants. See, I paraphrase here. Due to the fall in customer base. So these are the things I didn't mention in my introduction, but now I'm expanding on them here. See the linking word I used for the explanation sentence. This means that more and more individuals will stop patronizing car sellers due to the encouragement from the government to use mass transit. See, I use mass transit here. Not public transit, I use mass transit often. Then furthermore, see the linking word here, furthermore. So these are linking words for, because the next thing I want to say is another disadvantage. So I say, furthermore, the salary range of individual car ownership can be a form of threats to individuals' personal choices. You know, I just mentioned it briefly in my introduction. I just said interfere with personal preference here in my introduction. So here I'm now further expanding on it. A form of threat to certain individuals' personal choices. In other words, see this linking word there, in other words, some persons who may have particular psychological challenges, such as phobia of crowded, the phobia of crowds or crowded areas, anyone? Phobia of crowds, crowded areas, will find it difficult to use public transport despite the government's seemingly good intentions. So see, then we conclude. Instead of using in conclusion, I decided to use to conclude. The move, see, this is a paraphrase. Instead of saying the promotion or encouragement, see, the move of some countries' government to promote frequencies of public transportation and their discouragement of personal mode of transport could translate to lesser, see, this word translate. Then I've used, however, I've used them nevertheless. Now I'm saying, on the contrary, it can negatively affect the local automobile sales industry. See another paraphrase. Another paraphrase here. And clash with a few individuals' personal choices. So this is just your essay, basically. Paraphrase, linking words, arrange your ideas properly in paragraphs, and you're good to go. Follow the formula. So screenshot these essays as the assignments, as the assignments. Okay. Any questions? No. no. Okay, see the way you do this essay. In your notes, in your notes book, your, the page we are going to write this at the top, you take note of the time when you started. Okay. Mm -hmm. For instance, you want to begin by 1 p.m. You write 1 p.m. You write, right, right, when you're true. You now write when you ended. If it's 140, 130, 150, write it at the top of the page, the paper, because you're going to write it and take a picture of it and send it 
send it to the group. That's how I'm going to write. So I'm telling you now, no. So you're not telling me that you typed it. No. Write it in your, on your paper. If we have done, yes, do you have a question? No, I said, okay, okay, yeah. understood. If you've downloaded the book, the answer booklet I sent, if you've downloaded it, that's fine. You can write on it, but if you have notes, just write it on your notebook. And after writing, then you now count the total number of words and also write it at the top. Write okay. the total number of words. Take a picture, send it to the group. Please, submit the, submit the assignments before Tuesday, before our next yeah, class, which is on Tuesday. You've taken a screenshot or you've written this question, have you? Yeah, I've taken a screenshot. So how many paragraphs should this type of essay have? In many countries, the ground between the rich and poor is growing. What is this cause? What solutions are there to tackle it? Hmm. Four? Oh, yeah, you do the introduction, then the body paragraph. So that body paragraph is going to explain the gap, the cause, yeah, too. It's going to explain the gap between the rich and poor, then also the cause, then you now give the solution and conclusion. That should be five. Mm. Let's look at this essay again. In many countries, oh, okay. the gap between... Okay. See, see the statement. In many countries, see, they ask mm -hmm. you two questions. In many countries, the gap between the rich and the poor is growing. This is the statement. What okay. is the cause of this? This is your first body okay. paragraph. This is the first question. What okay. solutions will tackle this? That's your second body paragraph. Second so you basically body. have four body paragraphs. One should face the causes. One should face the solutions. In this type of essay, when they ask you like problems and solutions or advantages and disadvantages, it's just good to have two, two for each. You understand? That's right. And you'll have two causes, then two solutions. Please, uh, someone should, you've screenshot the questions, right? Send it to the yes, WhatsApp ma. group. Send it to the WhatsApp group. This screenshot, send it to the WhatsApp group. So Aziz will see it too. And okay. then this is the second assignment. Screenshot this in some countries. There have been anything in the stress for such a request next to you. So who claims this is unfair? Experience from the lack of to buy these kinds of things. To what extent do we agree or disagree? So I'm just have you screenshot this? Sorry. Not to do that. Okay, yeah. So who has an idea of how to plan how to plan this? So let me just, because of time and because of time, let me just run through it. How to do this type of essay is that you just pick your stand. Do you agree or disagree? If you agree, then give two reasons, two or three reasons. If you disagree, then give two or three reasons. So you can say, after paraphrasing the statement briefly, please, you know this statement is very long. Just understand the whole idea, the concept of what they're saying. Briefly, just paraphrase it there, and that's okay. I, because they said to what extent, you can choose to use adjectives like I strongly, I strongly, you can add that one. I strongly disagree, I strongly agree. Or you can just say, I agree or I disagree because a, B, C, or because of A and B. So that A will now be your, what you expand on the body paragraph A, and then B will be what you expand on the body paragraph B, my second body paragraph. Do we understand? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. 
So that's the second, that's the second assignment. So I think that, let me just, let's leave it at that too. Have you screenshot it? Please, I want to. Yeah, well. Yeah. So any questions? Yeah. All right. No questions? Not for now. Okay, okay. So we'll be ending this class here. Thanks so much for coming to class early. We're able to achieve a lot within the two hours that we spent. So have a good night rest. Have a wonderful weekend. I will see you on Tuesday. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.